Welcome to another Precision Flyer Repairs video. This is on an American Flyer 360 Alco PA done in the Santa Fe Super Chief paint scheme from a set that was dropped off with me by a customer, set 5107W, that he wants all of it gone through and made ready to run just like the 1950s again. I love projects like this. It's so much fun to renew them and get them running great once more. I thought I'd just introduce you to this engine. It's virtually almost ready to be reassembled with the shell onto the chassis and final layout tested. But at this point can show you a few things that was done on it and uh, its current status. Uh, it did not run. The front engine up this way was seized and wouldn't run at all. I'll show you in a photograph soon what that was from. Um, it was remarkable, actually. There was such old and petrified Vaseline or other such gelatinous lubricant on the front armature's rear armature bearing that it had completely seized that bearing onto the shaft. You, you couldn't even turn it with pliers. Uh, remarkable. It almost seemed like a mechanical pressure fit where too tiny a bearing had been jammed onto too large a shaft. But really all it was was the uh, petrified or lubricant between the shaft and the inside of that bearing. Once that was removed, it was a positively fine bearing again. Uh, it also had a field connection that was broken. And generally, both motors needed complete stripping down uh, and cleaning. Uh, both also needed to be uh, rebushed with uh, fresh brass bushings inserted. I'll show you photographs of that as well. The shell, on the other hand, uh, is nearly perfect. Um, it's in beautiful condition. Uh, I'm not going to wash this one because that endangers the affixing of the decals to the shell, which are fine. Uh, you can see the body posts are fine. I put an aluminized duct tape shield underneath the nose. I just do that preventatively. It'd be a terrible shame for this engine's nose to get melted because right now it's virtually fine. That's just a little mark from my hand having been there. And uh, the horn was loose, but the heat staking still there, so that got a little glue. And the uh, headlight lens was loose, so that got it fixed with a little glue to stay there. But otherwise, the shell is in really great shape. And um, Nothing to do on that one other than those few minor measures. Uh, the reverse unit um, was dirty. It had complete fingers that were intact and functioning. So uh, the, the drum got cleaned and the fingers got cleaned uh, and uh, everything um, then lightly lubricated with 226, um, but really didn't require an overhaul. It didn't look hardly as though it had been worn much, just aged and oxidized. The motors, however, were a different story, as I mentioned. One bit of equipment here on the bench that you'll notice I have. Uh, this is the RR Amp meter by DC Specialties. Uh, it's a terrific meter. It automatically senses whatever voltage you have passing through it, whether that be DC, AC, or DCC. By the way, DCC is neither AC or DC. Uh, we won't get into that now, but um, this will detect whether it's any one of those three and automatically indicate the volts and amperage being exchanged through the unit. Uh, I find it very handy to not only use here at the bench, but out on site with customers at their layouts to find power drop locations and other such things to resolve. I have it here with this engine because I can show you uh, how it functions on the rollers before it goes out onto the uh, track. Uh, also thought I'd show you a little gizmo that I have here at the workbench. I call it my Selectomatic or Operating System Selector Box. Um, I can put it in command mode, which is this switch at the top. That's also a lock toggle, so I make absolutely sure you really want to go into command mode. You have to lift that up in order to switch the toggle over from side to side. And then once I am sure the mode I'm in, if it's conventional, it can be an AC or DC. And if I'm in command mode, then I can be in TMCC or the center position, which is off, or DCC if I choose to be in that. When the armed light is on, that means there is power making its way to this output on-off switch, which is my last safeguard 
um, against having power go out to something in the wrong format that I might really want it to be. But it sure comes in handy since I can work on trains here at the bench in any of those modes, AC, DC, TMCC or Legacy, and DCC as well. It saves from having to switch alligators around and uh, plug transformers in and out. So without any further ado, I thought I'd just uh, fire this up. The uh, 1.5B American Flyer Transformer is set to just 10 bolts at the railhead. Um, I use a 1.5B here on the test bench because it's the weakest transformer and if anything's going to show itself as an issue, it's going to happen when there's the least power available. You can mask some problems by having great big transformers behind an engine, but you're really going to critical test it when you've got just the minimum amount of power someone might use it with. So there we go. You can see even though that's 12 volts, there's nothing running. So it's not at the railhead with the train running. But when it is running, uh, that's about 10 volts, which is spec for the reverse unit to fire. Uh, although this one can actually fire it with as little as uh, eight and a half volts. And um, you can see it's a pretty strong amperage consumer, which is American Fire Open Train dual motor diesel bar. It's pulling two amps already. And yet she's moving right along. And the reverse unit exchanges positions as it ought to. Now we're going in the opposite than we were. I have the light turned off so you can see the readout on this RR amp meter. It's railroad amp meter. And then you can get up to um, about 12 volts here. Pulling a little over 2 amps. Let's measure that the rail head. As you can see here. And um, of course with that 18 or 30 B behind it, you're going to get a lot more juice. But it cruises right along at a nice rate of speed. Bring it back down to about that 10 volts again. And then with my Selectomatic, be able to uh, activate the reverse unit. And um, now I'll turn the light back on. You can see the engine a little better. It's cruising right along, turning fine. Headlights on, I turn out. Now what I thought I'd do is jump over to a slideshow, see how this works. I'm uh, otherwise going to dub slides into a video and learn how to do that. But uh, when the engine was first opened up, uh, this is what the motor looked like. And as you can see, there's some pretty bad gunk in there. The um, fact is it was so bad that that armature shaft could not turn inside that bearing. It was positively seized with just that little bit of old lubrication that had congealed. And here you can see the bearings, what they look like when they start to wear out. Uh, they get oblong and oblong and funny shaped. The um, brand new one next to it, you can see, has a nice crisp circular hole through it. Now here's another one. This is the small side. There's two sides to the frame, one with larger diameter bearings and one with smaller inside diameter bearings. You have to be certain to get them put in the proper side and the axle fed through accordingly. Um, these were all rebushed. This is the um, removal of one of those bushings. Uh, you, you tap it out with as broad a head driver as you can so as to get a good uniform amount of pressure across its face when you drive it in toward the chassis and out of the hole. Uh, there's what it looks like when the old bushings are removed on both sides. You're looking at where the large inside diameter bearing goes. Here's preparation for the uh, new bushing. Um, that's got the uh, red Permatex, Loctite Permatex uh, being applied to the uh, inner wall of uh, the, 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 the chassis hole where the bushing will get pressed in. Uh, here we are with the uh, Arbor Press. Uh, good uniform, flat gentle pressure to drive that bushing in, solid, straight, and uh, deep. Uh, here you have the um, two bushings in on one side. Uh, both of them now, try to get the lighting a little better for you there, um, ready for their axles after the Loctite has been given about an hour to set. And here are the uh, two chassis, uh, all 
all spruced up, degreased, cleaned, ready to go, along with, of course, uh, their wheel sets and gears picked free of all the old congealed grease on them as well. This is virtually um, two factory fresh disassembled chassis ready to be given new life again. Uh, here they are now with the wheel sets installed, the gears as well, uh, trued and gauged and uh, ready to be mated with their armatures and fields and remaining pieces that make them complete motors. Um, here's a view underneath of uh, the gear and the bushing just to give you an idea of when that's assembled the thrust plate is there also to the right uh, make sure they're seated correctly this engine had a thrust plate that was there but it was actually sitting on the edge of its notched housing and not pressed all the way back into that housing which prevented the forward motors armature from any lateral travel which can cause it to uh, run hot so make sure that even though they look factory and still reusable as these were, they're properly seated. Here we have um, an assembled motor. Uh, its armature, of course, has been cleaned and all the gunk removed from anything inside the armature bearings. Uh, the commutators have been cleaned and polished. The gaps between them cleaned as well, cleared of any old carbon buildup, and uh, measured uh, segment to segment for continuity and resistance. Uh, both of these armatures measure 2.1 ohms from any segment to another, which is good, solid consistency. And uh, here you see underneath, uh, after it's been greased, a little difficult in this shot. I apologize that the screen can't get any brighter than this. It's on max. Uh, but the um, grease is well in place on those gears. They're wet, I assure you. And then down along the sides of them and the axles, use a good tactile multi-purpose lithium grease um, my favorite over the years and i've tried several uh is luber plate 630-aa that's luber plate 630-aa um, don't use the other luber plate products not that they're bad they're all good but they're for special purposes and this one is an all-purpose one so there we have it for um the slides at that point then you know it pretty much went into this state and is ready to be taken out on the layout and uh, run from there. I'll be doing the B unit with its diesel horn in it and uh, giving each of the freight cars a thorough going through, making sure that uh, they're gauged and uh, cleaned and uh, made ready. And the operating car that's with the set and an extra operating car that it gave me uh, also gone through and tested and made ready to run and have some fun with. So until we meet again, be well and have fun running your trains. This is Precision Flyer Repair signing off. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll be notified then whenever I post a new one. If you'd like more information, go to www.precisionflyerrepairs.com. Thank you.